What's up MMA fans? Back to do part 5 of the 8 part series of 2013 MMA prospects. This video of course is for the light heavyweights. Um, again, trying to pump these videos out uh, quicker. Again, if everybody knows, um, you know, time has been very valuable, valuable for me, especially at the start of the new year. I was hoping to get these videos out earlier, but nonetheless, I'm uh, going to try to do my best. And again, going to try to to shorten the video up uh, quickly and, you know, not to make it as long as some of the previous uh, weight divisions. But nonetheless, let's get started. Uh, the late heavyweight division, um, you know, some of these names you guys will really know well. And, you know, but most of them are fairly obscure and original. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, unknown fighters. Hopefully, uh, you guys will enjoy it. So starting off the list, <clears throat> first guy I'm going to talk about is Max Nunez, six foot four, two hundred and five pounds, just twenty three years of age, nine wins, no losses, four TKO, five submissions, I believe, from Stockholm, Sweden. New Wave Academy MMA, very interesting prospect, uh, to say the least, for the late heavyweight division. You know, it's the division where we, we need to see some big prospects. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of hype behind this guy now. He train, um, you know, starting to train and and become very big in Sweden. Um, you know, good to see some some solid prospects in the heavier divisions. Known for his ground game, you know, big ground and pound fighter, with good KO power, you know, decent tie work, works from the tie. Um, you know, striking does need some improving as does his other own game, but, you know, he's shown some good kicking ability. Um, real crowd-pleasing fighter. A guy we will definitely see more of as he continues to, you know, push his name out there and, and really, you know, Realistically, this guy could be signed at any time in U in the UFC or in Bellator. You know, we all know the light heavyweight division is great, but it could use some more guys. And you know, the way this guy sh has blown through his opponents, you know, definitely a guy could get a shout now. He's he's got a victory over a pretty decisive victory over 13 and 6 Kevin Thompson, um, 9 and 5 Tony Moran. He's also beat highly touted prospect at 7 and 1 Ian Martell. Um, you know, check out the video links, you know, it'll be worth your time. They got some very interesting and entertaining stuff in there uh, on Max Nunez. Definitely, you know, maybe the hottest prospect right now in the light heavyweight division. So a guy that we will definitely see more of, Max Nunez. The next fighter I'm going to talk about, um, fairly obscure, and maybe a lot of people don't know about him, but they probably will very soon, Alik Tesco. Used to fight at heavyweight. Six foot one, two hundred and five pounds. He is thirty years old, so you know. And that's another thing in this this video. You'll see a lot of these guys. You know, some guys are young, but some are pushing that thirty mark. Um, seven and one, two knockouts, five submissions. His only loss was a via knee injury to Dennis Smolderev, who was a hulking, you know, two hundred sixty or sixty plus pound heavyweight. Um, I know that he's recent. He also actually also fought a middleweight as well. But regardless, recently signed with American Top Team, I believe. Huge wrestling background. He's had over 500 career matches, so pretty significant there. Um, Greco and freestyle Greco Roman, a freestyle wrestler. Um, he's competed in tons of tournaments. You know, national championships, European championships. Just taking a look at some of his, you know, his background here. 2001 World Greco Champ, uh, 2002 Euro cha Euro uh, Champion as well. He's got the Nordic Championship title under his belt. This is all international competition. He also won the Christian Paolo Championships. Um, taking a look at uh, some other tournaments, he's been a 2009 uh, Estonian Greco Roman Championship. Uh, 2001, 2002 Junior uh, um, Greco-Roman Championship. He's won multiple uh, freestyle championships as well. Um, you know, pretty decorated wrestler uh, in Estonia, uh, the country that we haven't seen a lot of players from. You know, but you know, after these uh, light heavyweight and heavyweight videos I put out, you'll see a couple more. So, um, taking a look at some of his opponents, he hasn't fought. You know, a ton of great guys. Uh, uh, Eric Sabari is eight and seven. He defeated Sean, who is the guy who defeated Sean Sam. You know, uh, defeated three and two. Davis Colston. So I mean, with this guy's strong wrestling background, it makes him a factor. You know, and and I believe you know that's the it factor we've seen about 
many fighters, you know, strong wrestlers can make a difference, you know, in, in, in MMA. It's, if you're going to pick one background to have, wrestling is probably the one you want to start with, right? So, um, an interesting prospect on the lease. Uh, I believe he's been a member of the S, uh, SK Tapa team for 20 years. Um, you know, very hard and determined fighter, becoming very talented in BJJ, uh, trains under, uh, BJJ trains under the great Perrick Mahelson. He began MMA in 2009, and like I mentioned, his only loss was a, an ankle injury against Dennis Molarev, who was an undefeated heavyweight, and I believe, you know, Tesco was winning that fight. Um, interesting pro spec, at, uh, you know, very athletic, excellent cardio, you know, strong wrestling, and the BJJ transition has been easy for him, or sorry, the jiu-jitsu transition. Striking is improving, of course, you know, he's got the big takedowns, he, do, he has, does have some KO power, I mean, check out his videos, uh, there's a knockout video I'll put up against Laurie Rossman, you know, won that fight via KO, um, so check this guy out, interesting prospect, you know. Number three on the list, another guy I stumbled upon a few months ago, and there was a report this guy signed with Bellator, but I can't find anything on Bellator's website or, you know, upcoming fights, he, he doesn't, he's not listed on their on their roster, you know, maybe he has signed with them, but regardless, you know, when I found this guy, when I first seen this guy back in the late late summer there, like, he kind of stood out as a definite guy to keep an eye on, Lee McGrary, six foot six, two hundred and five pounds, he did turn 30 again, uh, three and oh, is a professional, one knockout, two submissions from the Channel Islands, um, recently signed on with Pellegrino MMA, huge light heavyweight, you know, um, could be in May very well end up being a heavyweight. Um, he's a kick, got some kickboxing experience in, and I believe he's a blue belt in uh, BJJ. Of course, you know his camp under head coach Kurt Pellegrino. He's also, you know, they also have the likes of Jeff, Jeff Lenz, Greg Soto, to name a few in that camp. Um, Gracie Barra, jiu-jitsu, uh, you know, uses his length. He's very dangerous with the kicks, ground and pound, good power. Got a good submission game, you know, he actually can work off his back. You see him winning some fights uh, off his back. Again, he's he has some kickboxing experience. He's had a lot of kickboxing fights, or I saw a few, and he's been in multiple jiu-jitsu tournaments. So definitely a guy to watch out for, absolutely. You could see this guy again sign any time with one of the big promotions because of his size and, and athletic ability. And, you know, defeated 3-1 Gregor Joes by submission. Um... And he's also beat 50 fight veteran Sean Lama. So, you know, he's got a couple of decent victories for a guy just starting out. Um, but definitely a guy, you know, I'll be shocked if we don't see this guy sign somewhere. Liam McGreary. Moving on in the list. As soon as I get to it, the next guy I want to talk about is Sarah Beck Saranov. And I may have pronounced his name wrong, but um, regardless, six foot one, two hundred five pounds, twenty six years of age, fighting out of the Ukraine with top Russian fight team Legion fight team, six and all with five knockouts, one submission, all in the first round. Um, in that camp, you know, he gets some of the names: Yuri Ivalev, Arkman Sultanov, you know, massive fight club, of course. This guy's got some crazy highlights, known for being very dirty and controversial. Um, the video you must check out is his weigh-in video uh, against Thomas Narukin. They went to the you know well well publicized incident they had and in, in, I think it was for an M1 fight um, when they squared off during the weigh-ins. They, they had an altercation and he he threw a few sucker shots. It was pretty brutal. Check it out. Um, haven't seen a ton of this guy basically because his fights end so quickly. He's got big KO power, good striking, good ground and pound, and some some submission skills. Need to see more of this guy. Um, hopefully he can stay out of trouble, you know, and, and give him someone legit to fight. Um, you know, maybe maybe hard to get him a big opponent, you know, in the current organization he's fighting in. You have to check out this guy's video. He's got uh, a big uh, KO victory over 60 fight veteran Valez Pajitvius. He's got a TKO win over 11-6 and six, uh, knockout artist Igor Shikarshuchuk. He's got a four-second KO win over Adrian Malakov. you got to check this video out. To me, it's almost like a sucker punch. The guy, they go to the center ring to touch gloves, and with half a second after they touch you, the lever is a devastating left hook that puts his opponent down and out. That's a video you want to check out for sure. He's got a first-round submission victory over 7-4 and four 
Vasily Klepikov and a TKO win over six and two Vizimasov Mirahekov. Now again, forgive me for the pronunciation, but I'm trying to just give some background on the guy. So you know, undefeated, six and zero, light heavyweight. Let's see this guy step up. He could definitely fight in the big leagues. Um, how we would do, I'm not sure, but check the guy out. Nonetheless, you'll have some very entertaining video on him. Uh, next guy I'm going to talk about, number five on the list, another interesting prospect, Brandon Ropati from West Auckland, Auckland, New Zealand, six foot one, two oh five, twenty three years of age, seven and zero as a professional, three knockouts, two submissions, I believe. He's one and zero as an amateur, fighting out of Oliver MMA. Um, started out wrestling before uh, deciding, uh, you know, to start training BJJ under Steve Oliver. Um, he medaled in Abu Dhabi, I believe, at the American Nationals. I don't know, if, I forget now if he finished first or what, what, what he finished. But, um, you know, momentum starting to build on this guy. Um, he's showing legit submission skills. He's been training uh, jiu-jitsu for about five years, MMA for three years. He's got some big KO power, good wrestling with some, you know, big slams. Um, you know, needs to keep improving, especially his stand-up game. Um, it's a good, really good video on him, good biography called, uh, uh, I think it's called Eye and a Prize. And at 2.30 I'll show his, his fight, it was a big uh, <clears throat> knockout victory, so definitely check this guy out. Um, he's got a recent big first round submission win over at the time 7-0 Cole David, so that was a big win for him. He's also defeated uh, the ultimate fighter veteran Sam Alley, and that's no easy win because Alley's been in there with some of the top guys. Um, at 185 and he's beat five and two James Rene so you know definitely an interesting guy who you'll probably get we'll probably get to see him you know hopefully this there's, there's some talk about Western Australia banning some banning MMA so that would you know the force this guy to come overseas and you know he deserves a shot regardless so Brandon Rapati next guy um, to watch out for number six on the list and I came across this guy again by a fluke a few while back but Sam Antar, six foot six, two hundred and five pounds, twenty three years of age. Again, another massive weight heavyweight. Three and zero with two knockouts. Uh, Rotterdam, Netherlands. Ruthless fight uh, is the company. Oosterbaan MMA. A new to the sport, young guy. Huge for two hundred five. Big power. Um, you know, um, with very dangerous striking. Uh, looks to looks to you know his ground game looks to be coming a bit. He does have some takedowns, still growing and very confident. I'll tell you how he came across this guy. Um, Dawid Baziak was at one time a very highly touted heavyweight and then heavyweight fighter. He started his career at six and zero or something. Anyways, he's fallen off, but this guy had a, a, a fight against Dawid. Baziak not too long ago and a fight lasted 51 seconds and, and these guys are throwing some massive leather and he ended up knocking Baziak out with the punch he delivered it just was a brutal punch and it made this the sound you really have to watch the video to appreciate it so I'll put it in the video links make sure you check it out Sammy Arantara guy to watch out for <clears throat> next on the list number seven Ian Martell six foot one 205 pounds 21 years of age uh, fighting out of England um, seven and one as a professional with four knockouts, two submissions, two and zero as an amateur, I believe, with two knockouts. So you know he's got a wealth of experience for just being 21 years of age. Um, Norwich kickstop MMA. Came on with you know the likes of Terry Adam, Paul Kelly, Paul Sass, Paul Taylor, Mark Adams, to name a few. He started out doing kickboxing and boxing as a kid. And at 19, started training MMA. So a lot of hype behind this guy. You know, he has actually fought in K1. And you can check some of those fights on YouTube. Though. Great striking, big KO power. Um, a little over aggressive at times. Needs to calm down. You know, as he matures as a fighter, you know, hopefully we'll see that. He has shown some decent takedowns and some brutal ground and pound. And his ground game is improving. You know, as you'll see in his fight against uh, against Harmon at UMS, UC MMA 19. Great prospect, you know. Um, he's, you know, check out the video links. He's beat the uh, four and one Prince Alula. Um, you know, most of his opponents have been lower level, with about half of his half of his opponents having, you know, losing records. But nonetheless, the guy is 21, so he's got, you know, counting amateurs. He's about 10 fights down. He's been dominant. 
I think the one last game of Max Nunez, so no shame there. And you know, um, I think he went to the second round with Nunez was maybe the only fighter to do that. So, um, nonetheless, great guy to check out. I'll uh, put up some a couple of highlight videos and a couple of his fights in the video section below, or sorry, the information section below. Uh, check it out, Ian Martell. <coughs> Next guy on the list, you know, and this is kind of a fun pick for me, um, kind of a brawler, I wouldn't say what a well-rounded fighter, but definitely a dangerous guy with brutal power, is Teal Radnik of Croatia. Just 5'9", 205 pounds, again, 31 years of age, so we're in that upper echelon. 5-0 um, with 5 knockouts, Croatian MMA League, pit bull split, um, background, short contact, um, probably could fight at, you know, Middleweight or even light heavyweight if he got serious enough. Um, big, big KO power. Started martial arts at 21. He started boxing for four or five, four or five years ago. He, he switched over. He's got a uh, over 50 kickboxing fights, so he's got a huge background in kickboxing. Um, probably, uh, you know, like I said, could make it to 170. He's a southpaw fighter. Big knees and you know, big kicks. Um, very low level opponents for the most part. I think they combined a two and seven record. Um, you know, he may be just a brawler, but he's definitely fun to watch. And I think he does have more than five victories. If you look on, uh, if you look on YouTube, you, you know, there's multiple fights of him fighting guys that don't show up on his record. Guys, he's beaten. So you know, check it out. Um, he's got a brutal knockout victory on YouTube here against a guy by the name of Faraji. I'll put it up. And there's another another pretty decent video of him, um, called The Beginning. So, Tio Radnik, if you want to see some crazy knockouts and, you know, an interesting guy, check him out. Next guy on the list, Sultan Aliyev. Six feet, 205 pounds, 28 years of age. Debnet, Russia. 8-0 with six knockouts. Um, champion is the association. Solid, uh, solid uh, uh, ground game fighter. Um, you know, with the likes of, uh, it's a good camp, the likes of 18 and 2, Sham, Shamil, Zamorov, Megomed, Kasablov, so some, some good training partners. Um, his background, European champion in combat, Sambo, and, two, and the 90 kilogram 2012 championships. Strong wrestler, um, you know, good control and ground and pound. Um, you know, improving on his feet, you know, uses the low kick well to set up, you know, his takedown offense, and he's got some decent power. So, if you look at his record, he, he does have some very significant wins. He's beat 10 and 4 uh, Harcho Darperian. He's beaten 4 and 1 Luis Henrique. 11 and 3 Sergey Goza. 5 and 3 Alexei Verchuk. And 8 and 6 Marcin Elsner. So, he does have some pretty significant victories over guys with winning records. Um, you know, take a look at the video section below. Or the information section below for some video on this guy, and you know, you guys make your decision. Number 10 on the list, you know, a guy that uh, not many people hear about, but Paulo de Tarso, 1 0 with one knockout. Um, he is listed at 215, but I decided to put him in the uh, uh, light heavyweight tournament because he truly is a light heavyweight. Um, Brazilian fighter, Barrow Bro slash fight shape. I don't have confirmation on this guy for his age and his height. I have heard he's 31 years old and six foot one. But if anybody has confirmation, you know, please feel free to, to comment and leave that on on video. Background: high level black belt, um, black belt uh, jiu-jitsu under Alexandra Soka Carnero. Started training at a very young age. He's one of uh, Sugaya's uh, top black belts. He's also a head instructor at UM2 Academy in Rio de Janeiro. Um, you know. He had a big victory in his only fight against Fabio Grigel's black belt, uh, Fernando de Ferra, who's 9-4. and four. Um, He had a big TKO win in that fight, you know, against a very experienced fighter. The first time that guy's been stopped in his 13 career fights. Um, you know, check out the video link, but, you know, surprisingly it was his Muay Thai that was the difference. So, an interesting guy. Anytime you get a super high level black belt, you know, Paulo de Tarso. It makes him a, a you know a guy to watch out for in the light heavyweight division. Of course, he's only had the one fight, but you know, interesting prospect. Number eleven on the list, Marcin Lazarus. Now, I believe this guy is 26. 
205 pounds, any confirmation on the height, I believe he's 6'2", but that, that has to be confirmed. 5 and 0, one knockout, two submissions, fighting at a Team Titan, a uh, Poland fighter. Background, you know, with the likes of uh, Brad Pickett in that camp, Jason Young. Jiu-Jitsu is this guy's strong point. He has shown decent wrestling. Obviously, his striking needs work. He's still a prospect and deserves some attention. Um, he caught my eye when he had a big victory over, you know, a highly touted prospect, uh, Sam Menze, who I was going to include in this video until he got defeated by Lazarus. So, I mean, Menze is now 4-2 and two and kind of fading a bit, but he's also got a, a big victory over 11-2 and two Moldova yeah. prospect, Paulo Vigero, you know, so that was a significant win. Check out the video section. Oh, this guy is a decent light heavyweight. I mean, um, do I see him fighting in, in the UFC? Not positive. He definitely could fight and, you know, won a Bellator tournament. So, a guy to watch out for. Next guy on the list is Todd Schmas. 32 years of old age. So again, getting up there. 205 pounds. Need confirmation on the height. I know he's not a tall guy. 2-0 and is a professional one knockout one submission. I believe he's had an amateur fight. Um, background, Iowa State. 121-18 and 18 record. Iowa Central Community College. He replaced the previously Cain Velasquez as the guy at that school. Um, later went to Iowa University, where his career was shortened by a knee injury. Um, so significant background in wrestling, and you know his first fight in MMA. I believe he was about 240. It was huge on that fight, and now he's down to 205. So obviously wrestling is a strong point. Um, you know, great control and takedowns, brutal ground and pound. He does have a br brutal KO victory here on uh, YouTube. I don't know, I'm not going to comment much on his opponent and his technique, but a very brutal KO nonetheless. His X Factor, of course, the wrestling, you know, makes him an entry on this list. Um, his record, uh, you know, sub hasn't been top notch opponents, but he has beat uh, a fairly good, good late heavyweight in Jesse Lund, who is 10 and 5. And I believe he's got a big fight coming up um, in late January against 12 and 5 Will Dickey. So that's a that's a pretty significant fight. Dickey is 12 and 5 and 5 and 0 in the last fight. It'll be a tough test. I don't know if Smash is ready for it, but you know, nonetheless, check him out. Next guy in the list, Hiroslav Slade, fighting out of Dramanic, Croatia, 6'2", 220. 22 years of age now. Of course, he's listed as a heavyweight, but this guy absolutely is a light heavyweight. 5-0, um, and oh, three knockouts, one submission, gladiator team, you know, and that's a fairly known big camp in, in Croatia. Not that Croatia MMA is massive now, but, you know, it's growing. And Meryl Perak is, is the head of guy in that camp, but he's a fighter I spoke about six years ago, amongst others, you know. And now he's fighting the heavyweight. But I will mention, I mentioned there's another heavyweight I'm going to talk about from that camp. But that, of course, will come in the heavyweight video. Like I said, listed at 220, but he's a little soft for that weight. So, you know, 205 is home for him. He's kind of a brawler, a little sloppy. Um, but based on his camp and his last fight, he had a win over former Pro Cop training partner, Marco Ikrit, by KO. Um, you know... Plus, he's unique, and not a lot of hardcore fans are going to know about this guy, so I wanted to put him on the list. He's showing some big KO power, a little sloppy, like I said, kind of going back and forth, but he does have a judo background, as most of the Gladiator team does. His videos, check out the videos, his record, like I said, he's got a big win, uh, KO win over 9-4, and four, Marco Erkrick, and also he's beat 5-3 and three, Esteban Conner, so some good uh, knockout videos of him here online. Check it out in the video section below or the information section below here is Lock Slade. Next guy on the list, Anthony Taylor, fighting out of England. Um, the Lodge Fighters. Sheridog has him at 5 and 0. Oh, I have him at 6 and 0 oh, with 5 knockouts, 1 submission, 2 and 0 oh as an amateur. Again, with first round submission victories. Uh, 6 1, 205 pounds, 28 years of age. Um, looking at his background, you know, very physically strong fighter. Big power, uh, you know, again, a little bit of a brawler, a little bit sloppy at times. Um, but his last win was a big victory, a big TKO victory over Bellator heavyweight uh, Mark Godbear, who was a guy who hasn't fought in Bellator yet, but he's a heavyweight that's signed and ready to go. Um, he was supposed to fight Frazier Opie, who's now in the ultimate fighter, I believe. Um, 
at the M and I, but hope he got hurt. And he was supposed to fight again against, uh, you know, highly touted light heavyweight fighter Linton Vasso in the UK, of course. And that fight got cancelled. So he's been out of action for over a year. Um, powerful striker, big brawler, good good wrestler, big ground and pound. Um, you know, this guy definitely has to improve in all areas to you know become a full mixed martial artist. But again, I see no problem for this guy hopping in the Bellator uh, light heavyweight tournament at any time. And like I said, looking at his, you know, who he's beat, of course, the 8-1 Bellator heavyweight Mark Godbeer, and he's also beat uh, Nathan Brown, who's, who's 2-0, 2 and 1 as a professional, 3-0 as an amateur. So I do have one video of him to put on here in the, the link section. So Anthony Taylor, check this guy out. Next on the list, Christoph Piocha. 6'2", 205 pounds, 29 years of age, 8-0, two submissions, 2-0 two as an amateur, I believe. His background, you know, BJJ also uh, trained and competed um, in wrestling, uh, and boxing, and kickboxing. Uh, he's underneath the University of Samarita uh, Christopher Inf Infantry. I believe he won a gold medal at the Polish Open MMA Championships in 2008. Um, you know, he hasn't looked flashy by any means. Not the most exciting fighter to watch with only stopping two of eight opponents to start his career, but nonetheless, he's still unbeaten as a professional and an amateur. Shows good control, decent ground and pound, a very good grappler. Um, you know, his his amateur MMA shows he can stop fights, you know, but um, something he has to improve on if he wants to, be, you know, become a serious threat to anybody in the UFC or Bellator, or, you know, even if he's legit to get there. So he's a prospect, a guy to check out. He's starting to get a little bit older. He's got a victory over 4-2 and Marek Kwaski and 8-4 and Arizzi Chuola. So check him out. I'll put the video section up on this guy, Christoph Piocho. Last guy I'm going to talk about, this guy, you know, usually I really check out a lot of the fighters before I put them on there, um, include them in the videos. This guy, uh, uh, I do have a little bit of information on him, but the only video I have him is him submitting a guy with the rare naked choke, but you basically don't get to see anything. So I will put it up, but it's, you know, it is very really insignificant. Ronnie Wilson, 2-0, uh, as a professional, one knockout, one submission, 2-0 as an amateur. Again, very little information on this guy, but I'm willing to take a risk on him. Um, he is the 96th fighter, if anybody's keeping track so far in this eight-part series that's been mentioned. Um, like I said, light heavyweight fighter that has fought at heavyweight. This guy is jacked. He's got a massive build. Muay Thai background. Looks to have big KO power and, you know, good striking. Um, so, other than that, I don't know a whole lot. I know that um, he's been mentioned on a few sites about, you know, potentially being, a, you know, a future big name. But, he's you know, he's, I believe he's 31, which kind of puts him up there a little bit. Um and I think he's listed at 215, but um, he's got a victory over 3-1 and one, Maubad Obera. And Obera is a guy who's got a decision victory over UFC or Ultimate Fighter veteran and Bellator veteran Zach Jensen. Not that that's a huge guy to beat, but it's still a name. Um, again, I'll put up the small video on this guy. And again, that's kind of taking a little bit of a chance, but a guy definitely that I wanted to mention, Ronnie Winslow. So that does it for the light heavyweight video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, the three divisions that I have left are very interesting and looking forward to pumping those videos out. Um, so thanks for watching. And again, guys, you know, comments, anything, you, you know, positive, negative, let's hear it. And if, you know, if there's any fighters you want to comment about, then let's hear it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you part six coming out shortly.